87 years ago, the World Jewish Congress was founded in Geneva, Switzerland, with one overwhelming goal, and that was to act as the diplomatic arm of the Jewish people at a time when Europe was experiencing a wave of growing anti-Semitism and Nazism was rising. And today, almost nine decades later, the leadership of the World Jewish Congress is gathering for a meeting of the organization's executive committee here in Madrid, Spain. And although much time has passed, the region is really seeing a terrifying similar rise in anti-Semitism that has the Jewish community on edge across the world. Now, today we are so honored to sit down with you, the president of the World Jewish Congress, Mr. Ronald Lauder, who has served since 2007. And Mr. Lauder, my first question for you is about your diplomatic experience as the U.S. ambassador to Austria. That time in the 80s really deepened your commitment to supporting the revitalization of Jewish life across Central and Eastern Europe, where communities had been devastated by the Holocaust. And three Three decades later, do you feel that Europe is really doing enough to make this happen? Well, look, part of the revitalization of Jewish communities is education. Um, what we started in Eastern Europe and building schools, right now, over the last 30 years, 40,000 children have gone through my schools and they've found out what it means to be Jewish. But at the same time, we see it happening now in France, here, right, here in, right here in Spain, Italy, all throughout the world, even in Germany, schools are starting to thrive. And that's the major effort on what we're doing. Now, Mr. Lauder, 2021 was the highest year on record for documented reports of harassment and vandalism and, and violence directed against Jews worldwide. And that's really only gotten worse in 2022. So as a president of the World Jewish Congress, what do you attribute to this rise in Jew hatred? Well, Jew hatred is a symbol of, it's always been with us, but it was always undercover. Right. But right now, people feel empowered to speak out about it, and particularly what we see in, in universities now and in schools all over is that the, there's a great effort on behalf of people from other countries, particularly the Middle East, to infiltrate the schools and start talking about Jew hatred. But also, the Internet plays a major role. Today on the Internet, you hear a great deal about Jew hatred and what's going on. And celebrities and politicians have no more fear about talking about it negatively. And this empowers people to say, OK, we can now talk about it. In the past, they were embarrassed to talk about it. In, pa in the past, if you called someone anti-Semite, they were surprised. Today, they don't care. And that, that's what we have to change. It all starts from the top. We must have the government, the U.S. government, the French government, the Italian government, or governments all through the world, make a strong statement that there's no place for anti-Semitism or Jew hatred anymore in this world. I'm interested to know, why did you decide to hold the World Jewish Congress executive meeting in Madrid, Spain this year? Because clearly it's a country with a pretty small Jewish population. What we've seen here, and we saw it today from the, the, His Majesty the King Felipe, where anti-Semitism is very low here because the government, the king and the government is very strong saying we will not allow it. And that has made a major change. One of the reasons why we came to Madrid is to say thank you. Thank you to His Majesty, thank you to the government, and thank you for all the things they're doing. Plus the fact that in, um, shortly um, Spain will take over as the head of the EU. Right. And it's very important that they start talking about what can be done. We had a conference in Malmö several years ago, and there were many promises made most of the promises were not kept. We're asking the government now to start doing it. Throughout your career, you have been a big activist for Israel. And as time goes on, how do you think that relationship between Israel and the Jewish diaspora has changed? And how is the Jewish diaspora impacted by what happens in Israel today? Well, during these last 10 to 15 years, there's been a big gap between the diaspora and Israel. Mm -hmm. And because the fact that the foreign ministry was not active enough reaching out and there was not enough money put into ministries. There was not enough effort put in to working with diaspora. And this is a problem. Now, the question is, it doesn't affect people coming to Israel, but it affects the feeling 
of the government saying Israel doesn't care about these things. I myself have visited 40 countries yeah. during the last few years, and I get the same reason. You're the only person who's coming to us who's talking about Israel and talking about the relationship between Israel and the diaspora. It's critical. Now, you have called for Arab states and philanthropists around the world to make big investments into Palestinian society to further peace in the region. But do you think that enough is really being done right now to make that happen and that this is still the right path forward? I've called for a Marshall Plan. Marshall Plan was done in Europe and effectively. I want a Marshall Plan mm -hmm. for the Palestinians, for the Jordanians, for the Egyptians. The money become from various countries, U.S., EU, Middle East and Israel. If we do that, it can change everything. Thank you so much for being with us, Mr. Lauder, on I-24 News.